I'm not sure if you guys are familiar or if you guys care, but I'm a big, big fan of No Jumper. I've been watching that channel for many, many years now. And over the years, they've kind of um, pivoted and started to build up their podcasting network, it feels like. I mostly watch it on YouTube, so it's maybe not the traditional podcast that you'd listen to on audio-only format. But I do like the variety of shows they have. I do like the variety of hosts they have. I do like the fact that it's LA based. They're a bit wilder, it feels like, and a bit more shooting off the hip and they want to make it a bit of a show. I don't know if that's a thing that makes any sense, but there's a lot of entertainment value that comes from it. Um, I think it's something that I like to listen to in the background, something I like to watch actively, or sometimes if I'm on a mad one, just I like to watch if I'm getting fucked up at home and I want to feel like I'm in a room with somebody getting fucked up with. It's really, really bizarre, but I definitely do enjoy the show. I definitely do enjoy it. And obviously one of the main characters, somebody who people think is a, you know, one of the main characters, sorry, someone that people think is one of the kind of favorites of that show and that channel and that podcast network is house phone who also goes by his moniker little house phone right he's also a rapper too but people know him mostly from Mo no jumper and obviously doing his own brand called um i forgot the name of it it's dice it's dices and they have him on sneakers and stuff which is pretty cool but mostly you know his kind of a uh, fame i would say or kind of notoriety has come from being you know associated with no jumper but for whatever reason being that he's maybe well liked and well regarded and maybe some would say talented in terms of being a great personality in front of the camera he also takes the piss and he takes the piss by just not turning up a lot of the times um not giving the guys notice if it sounds like because they talk about it on the show when he doesn't arrive obviously or it doesn't appear um for whatever reason whatever the show's on let's say it's a wednesday or a tuesday or thursday or friday it always coincides with him having some sort of family emergency so you know most likely he's full of shit right it's just a standard thing it doesn't make any sense why every tuesday every wednesday every thursday every friday you always seem to have some kind of family issue that you're going through now to be charitable to him he did make it known that his mum, I think, is going through some health struggle, which is kind of affecting him, you know, personally, mentally, whatever, because obviously it's his mum. And he's obviously because I think it's just him with his mum. I think he's the only child, if I'm not mistaken. He's obviously having to look after her. So a lot of his time outside of the show is probably spent looking after her, making sure she's right. But unfortunately in the real world people have issues all the time we have things that we're going through and usually your work doesn't necessarily um, cave to your demands in terms of your personal life you have to basically make your personal life fit around your work and just kind of get get it sorted right and just kind of figure it out along the way just is what is part of being a grown-up you can't just you know take your ball and go home because um you're upset with something you just have to kind of suck it up and get to work especially if you want to get paid it just is what it is and he doesn't necessarily seem to be able to do that. And I think partly is to do with that, partly is to do with the fact that he's obviously well regarded, so you think he takes a piss. But I think the other kind of elephant in the room with this is his kind of long documented struggle with drugs and just, you know, the hard drugs, the party drugs, the cokes, the, the ketamines, the mollies, whatever it may be, right? Those drugs that would more often than not kind of take you away from take you off your path in terms of you doing something constructive in your life because i know i've been there right i know how hard it can be to balance being a party kid and also having dreams also having ambition also having work that needs to be done it's just near on i would say impossible to do to balance both of the things you have to decide whether or not you want to be a party kid or whether or not you want to be a businessman it just is what it is there is no mixing of the two things i don't think in my side of things because i've done them both to really excessive hardcore amounts or, or i've done them both to the limit sorry or hardcore amounts of course but they've definitely done them to the limits and i've noticed that the only way to really get forward especially with the, the hobbies that i kind of want to do the djing stuff the content creation the podcasting all that sort of things you just have to have to be a, you have to be at your best and to be at your best you have to be somewhat sober you can't be going into all these things blasted or you know suffering from a hangover because it just won't work or you just won't be bothered to do it in the first place and i feel like the reason why he's not turning up most of the times is because he has been on some sort of bender my so that's my own part that's my own point of view and i'm saying that because i know from my own personal opinion and of my own personal experience the times that i've not turned up to things and i've flaked on things or i've just been 
crappy at you know keeping in contact with people has been usually when i've been absolutely blitzed out of my mind and i've had an absolutely barnstorming crazy burghain weekend or something do you know what i mean usually i'm kind of you know out of action for a couple of days after that so imagine if you're working with people who do content on the pacific day it's a big network everyone's filming around the clock if you don't if you don't do your show on that day it's not like you can do it an hour later you have to just do it next week again so obviously that kind of fucks up the whole thing you've got a show going on you can't have you can't be especially if you're running the thing you can't be seen to be letting people take the piss even though you're somebody that's talented duh, 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 duh. so i generally think most of the time it's because of that there could be other things to do with the family but just for me speaking as a fan of his and a fan of the show it seems that to me the the party side of things is getting a little bit crazy and it makes sense though because over the last few months or years it felt like no over the last couple of years it felt like his own brand house fans brand has really been popping off and it's been doing really well he's been doing pop-ups he's you know started to do merch now he's not just doing shoes and unfortunately if you have a tendency to be a party kid and then you start to get more money more likely than not if you haven't curtailed the tendencies to go out and pick up an eight ball you the first thing you do when you get some money is you're gonna go buy your own eight ball because maybe before he was scrimping a couple of grams here and there or you know jacking a couple of bumps here and there having a line up here and there but then when you suddenly get your own money now you can actually go out and buy your own eight ball right i mean maybe buy an ounce buy whatever do you know what i mean and go absolutely crazy so i think that's what's happened like more money has essentially caused him more issues and he now has more access to things that he probably didn't have access to and obviously the clout also is maybe you know brought people around him that probably aren't the most constructive people and maybe are a bad influence whatever it may be but it does look like the end is nigh with highest phone if you um if you abide by this um video that was posted on the no jumper subreddit uh, it's titled actually house phones last day and no jumper is approaching where adam the head of no jumper the founder of no jumper is basically speaking about how he had a conversation with no with house phone and basically told him this is it i gave house phone the, the serious facts like you bet you ghost the podcast one more time it's over did he reply no but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I finally actually no. took a stand and was like, bro, you can't keep doing this. Yeah. Like, this is so out of pocket. Nobody else would give you this long of a leash in terms of this shit. You just, you can't keep doing this to us. It's over, you know? Man, I hope my boy all right. Oh, Damn. God, it has been a leash it. of years. It's been many, you feel what I'm saying? Many so, years of but the, I feel like the main thing is, like, at least send us like, the, the hour, hour pre-text and be like, guys, hour anything maybe two hours that is so not how actual podcasts work like every podcast i know and and by all accounts if i'm not mistaken also kiki one of the guys sitting across from adam who happens to be the half brother of ad who's also another host on there he also has been fired as um adam uh, personal security the story goes that he didn't turn up to a gig that they were meant to do or he was meant to catch a flight with adam to chicago and didn't turn up and didn't give him any notice and this happened quite a few times so he's fired kiki so he's obviously putting his foot down but it's it seems like running a podcast network especially if you're a very you know big personality yourself look at what happened to joe budden and look what's happening now with adam 22 on no jumper is very difficult it's very very difficult and i think in just in general forget big personality i think just in general managing people is super 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 hard and it seems like to me anyway i don't know if this makes any sense it seems like to me the only way to really do it the only way to really do it that makes sense is to maybe hire somebody to do the managing of the podcast network side of things maybe i don't know if they're called like a program director is that is that what they're called maybe a, a podcast manager i don't know someone who can maybe just handle the day-to-day -day goings on of like scheduling of making sure who's won what show you no know, scheduling who's making sure who, who, what, who's hosting what show making sure people are getting there on time managing just the hr side of things that maybe needs to be done by somebody else and not the person who maybe founded the network the podcast whatever it may be that maybe is a better way to go about it and maybe you use the person who founded it as a sort of like mark no somebody to maybe draw people in and to maybe you know go out there and get more hosts or to negotiate contracts with new people that side but in terms of the managing of it day to day it might be beneficial to get another person involved just so there's a bit of distance and maybe so the host also can maybe take it more seriously so they're not thinking it's just their friend because i'm sure 
part of maybe Housewives defense would be like, yeah, this is Adam, and he's my boy. We've been doing this general jumper thing for years. So you don't necessarily see it as such a big deal if you miss a couple of shows here and there, which doesn't really make any sense, really, you think so, because, you know, having this opportunity to be on No Jumper is a huge opportunity. It's something that you shouldn't be taking for granted. Like, if this thing was here and I was younger and I cared about being a part of a gang and a crew and representing someone, I think I would definitely be a you know running to have an opportunity to you know to be a part of their show or just to help out in any way shape or form obviously now i like to do my own thing and kind of move to, to the sound of my own drum but still i think they take it for granted a lot and it's weird because a lot of these guys don't come from money they don't come from privilege they've all kind of worked shitty jobs and they've landed this amazing gig where they just sit around and talk about shit that they saw on the internet and music that they listen to and crazy stories that they're you know crazy stories they have about parties they went to and people they've seen it's basically the dream, dream job so to get that job and to kind of fuck it up on purpose is a bit messed up and then a small update here as well concerning it is that i guess house phone posted something on his instagram account um where he basically you know let, let the fan knows that he appreciates the support but also let the fan knows to leave him the fuck alone which is you know typical house phone really in it doesn't understand why people are pissed at him at all but it goes as follows this is from house phone's uh, instagram account it says i appreciate all the concerns messages from people being positive even the negative ones lol i'm over i'm over making excuses um the other team so i'm over making excuses the other people on the team don't deserve for me to keep acting the way i do the supporters of No Jumper don't deserve it either. But sending me hateful messages or acting like I'm lying about my situation isn't doing anything but making the situation worse. Okay. If you really care about me, if you're a fan of the shows or me as a person, just think before you press and send on those messages. Y'all have blessed day and expect me to be on my shit from now on. Yeah, but he always says this, man. He always says this. And again, this to me is like classic behavior of somebody that does a lot of stuff outside of the podcast. Again, I could be I could be incorrect. It could definitely be something more serious and that, that we are not aware of. But the incons the the lack of consistency, the flakiness, um, the lateness, all this sort of stuff for me is that was what things that I've kind of gone through in my time that I know I've struggled with that have kind of probably messed up a few situations that I had in the past that were pretty that, that that may have had some you know some scope to it that i probably pissed up the wall because i was just getting too active outside of work and then i realized quite soon after especially after reading many many profiles of many different artists djs musicians um you know brand owners founders and stuff the honest the real honest thing about it especially if you really dig deep into the details and read between the lines the people who are really smashing at the top level they don't indulge in the outside stuff. They don't even go outside. They don't even go out recreationally. They just focus on their craft, unfortunately. But they might, you know, they might um, perpetuate this image that they're a man about town, that they get on it, they do this. They don't really. There's no way of doing it. Like a good example I always use is Future or The Weeknd. Maybe there was a time in, in, their, in their, you know, uh, in the past where they were maybe party boys and getting on it and doing loads of drugs and you know snorting lines off a of flipping model's breast and stuff but to be a, to be an artist of their caliber at the moment producing the bodies of work that they do in terms of albums putting on the live shows that they do going and doing Fallon appearances and all this sort of stuff you can't be doing that if you're always drinking lean you can't be doing that if you're snorting lines off the side of your phone you know before you jump onto Jimmy Fallon you just can't sooner or than later it catches up with you i know especially on my level i know I, just imagine what it is on their level where you get access to more things you have more people around you encouraging you it just isn't likely to happen that way so what they do is that they perpetuate this image to make it seem that they're fun party boys but really they're boring they just sit in the studio like if you read the actual accounts of future from people that have actually worked with him close collaborators they say he spends like you know whole days like days weeks on weeks just in the in the studio sleeping on an air mattress and stuff do you think you could do that all the time listening to music coming up with amazing hooks and you just drinking all day drinking lean getting smashed like no it doesn't work that way you there has to be a come a point where you're just focusing on the work there's no way you can you can fine tune a hi-hat or an ad lib when you're buzzed it doesn't work that way it really doesn't i've tried it trust me it doesn't work um same goes for the weekend like the weekend is a, a legit pop star now at the moment do you think he's doing as much blow as he was talking about when he was making house of balloons of course not man of course not 
and I doubt if he was ever doing it in the first place anyway. Do you know what I mean? It just is what it is. Um, but yeah, hopefully House Phone gets his stuff fixed up um, or fixes himself up. If he doesn't, then life will end up just taking its natural course and you end up getting fired and things will end up just going where they need to go. But it is a shame though. You thought he, he was kind of, you know, he kind of figured it out and was finally you know realizing the opportunity he was given and not taking it for granted especially after he had that chat with og suicide but it seems like you know nothing has really changed in that regard in it so maybe life has to just play out the way it does in order for him to learn the lessons he needs to learn you know it's sad but these these are these are the things that we have to go through <laughs>